How do you go about getting an exorcism? Beg your pardon? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the movie scenes that made audiences walk out. <laughs> Number 10, The Chestburster, Alien. Anyway, where are we? Right here. We're on our way home. H.R. Yeah. Geiger's design for the legendary xenomorph alien was grotesque enough when it was just a guy in a costume, but his first appearance as a newly hatched infant is the moment many filmgoers decided to bail. What's the matter? The food ain't that bad, on, baby. <laughs> About a third of the way into the sci-fi horror classic Alien, John Hurt's character Kane has been unknowingly impregnated by the alien. When the monster crashes through Kane's stomach and slithers out of his bleeding innards, it was enough to make the more squeamish viewers flee the theater altogether. Though the camera doesn't linger on the gore too much, there's still just enough to make your stomach turn. Cargo and ship destroyed. I should reach the frontier in about six weeks. With a little luck, the network will pick me up. Number nine, the tent scene, the Blair Witch Project. Have you ever heard of the Blair Witch? It actually sounds kind of familiar. My older sister went to Blair High School. It's difficult to overstate how novel this movie was. Found footage is an obvious gimmick now, but many people really believe this movie captured the last days of a group of documentary filmmakers investigating the title urban legend. I understand we have to go, believe me. I know it is hard for go. all of us to hold it together. We need to get out of here in I one know. piece, and this I is know not this. helping. You're not Telling me anything I don't know. Its handheld photography was so new that it gave viewers motion sickness, which only heightened the building hysteria around the film. One scene in particular, where the character's tent is attacked by unseen forces, was the final straw for many. And I just want to apologize to Mike's mom and Josh's mom and my mom. As it's nighttime, we can't see much, and what we can see is unfocused and constantly moving around the screen. It is a confusing, scary, and disorienting moment that left vulnerable viewers nauseous. Turn that light off. Turn it off, Josh. Shh. All lights off. Number eight, Jenny Any Dots, Cats. Her name is Jenny Any Dots. Her coat is of the tabby kind. Even fans of the original Broadway show were intensely skeptical of the 2019 film adaptation. There's no way a movie could live up to the spectacle and tomfoolery of the show. This early number, led by Rebel Wilson, confirmed those fears. I am deeply concerned with the ways of the mice. Their behavior's not good, and their manners not nice. As Jenny Any Dots, Wilson's vocals are clearly lacking, but the scene is a cavalcade of misjudged jokes and horrors previously unknown to the movie-going public. Jenny Any Dots mercilessly chomps down on CGI cricket dancers and basically skins herself mid-number. Now put the icing on the cake! Why did you want another Jellicle life? I can't keep being in this kitchen! Don't get cocky! For people who went in knowing very little about cats and expected a lighthearted musical comedy, it was a bridge too far. Number seven, Home Invasion, A Clockwork Orange. A nice, warm, vibrating feeling all through your gutty woods. Soon it was trees and dark, my brothers, with real country dark. In Stanley Kubrick's film adaptation of the Anthony Burgess novel, the cruelty is the point. Vicious sociopathic outlaw Alex and his gang of deranged droogs revel in terrorizing and debasing their fellow human beings. The entire movie is an exercise in endurance. Hi, hi, hi there. Well, hello. Hey, oh, hey. Hey, have a right. Hooray. Welly, 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 well. How much cruelty can you watch? Early in the film, Alex and his droogs break into a writer's home, beat him within an inch of his life, and assault his wife while Alex cheerfully crows out the lyrics to Singin' in the Rain. It's a relentless scene. Forcing the audience to stare at abject evil is a big ask, and this was the moment many decided A Clockwork Orange wasn't worth the price of admission. Number six, Allie's death, Terrifier 2. Now for a guy who doesn't speak, he sure makes a lot of noise. All the way from Miles County, please welcome Art the Clown. 
Art the Clown is easily one of the most evil horror villains of the last several years. The Terrifier series by Damien Leone is all about making its audience squirm in complete disgust. Nothing about the way he dispatches his victims is easy, efficient, or merciful. Stop. Please stop! Please! Hey, when the quick cause in trouble? The scene where he brutally murders Ali is several unflinching minutes of extended violence, but that's not even the cruelest part. It's when Art begins pouring salt and bleach over her disfigured body that really separated the viewers who were buying what this movie was selling, and those who couldn't handle it. Sir, if you're gonna put that in your mouth, you gotta pay for it. Number five, The Crucifixion, The Passion of the Christ. Come on, not fashion. Yes. Mel Gibson's epic film version of the life and death of Jesus Christ was truly a spiritual experience for Christians and non-Christians alike. Where previous films made the crucifixion a theatrical but relatively bloodless affair, Gibson's camera lingers on Christ's wounds and suffering. For many Christians, it brought them even closer to their faith. For other audience members, it was a work of art that was just too brutal and brimming over with unnecessary violence. David Edelstein was one of many critics who were unimpressed by the violence, dubbing it the Jesus Chainsaw Massacre. No matter your faith, the crucifixion scene is a hard watch. <laughs> Number four, one of us, Freaks. They'll make her one of us, a loving cop, a loving cop. MGM was attempting to compete with the blockbusting Universal monster <laughs> movies when they dreamed up this little horror show. Set among traveling circus performers, the beautiful trapeze artist marries a sideshow performing <laughs> dwarf for his inheritance. Are you laughing at me? Why, no, monsieur. Thanks, I'm glad. Why should I laugh at you? Most big people do. They don't realize I'm a man. Unfortunately, 1932 audiences were immediately horrified by the sight of any body difference on screen. The scene where the performers accept Cleopatra, the trapeze artist, as one of their own, had many audiences siding with the movie's villain. During test screenings, people became so ill that there was talk of lawsuits. According to the film's art director, audiences didn't walk out, they ran out. Needless to say, the movie was a financial disaster. Number three, The Arm, 127 hours. It is a bit of a climb. We climbed. And a bit of a squeeze. We squeeze. James Franco plays Aaron Ralston, the real-life rock climber who spent five days trapped by a large boulder. The movie about Ralston's real brush with death and his desperate escape spares none of the gory details. And this morning, on the boulder, we have a very special guest, self-proclaimed American superhero, Aaron Ralston! For five minutes, we're forced to watch every move he makes as he endeavors to amputate his own arm to free himself off the boulder. Director Danny Boyle makes sure we get several close-ups of his incisions and the blood and meat of his exposed arm. The stinging of the musical score as he severs tendons and nerves is almost too much to take. There were several reports of audience members fainting and vomiting during it. Those who were lucky enough to keep their wits simply walked out. You have a phone? Yes, but no signal. You should stop and rest. I gotta keep going. Number two, the ear, Reservoir Dogs. Guess what? I think I'm parked in the red zone. Quentin Tarantino would show us a lot of blood and violence throughout his career, but no one knew what to expect from Reservoir Dogs, his first feature. In the most disturbing scene, Michael Madsen's sociopathic bank robber taunts a captive policeman with a song and dance before severing his ear with a straight razor. Unlike the director's later work, the violence is played mostly off screen. That is until Madsen brings the severed ear into the frame and talks into it. You know, because he's a funny guy. <clears throat> are you gonna bark all day, little doggy? Or are you gonna bite? Early film festival screenings saw several walkouts during the scene. Tarantino, of course, took this as a compliment. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications.
Number one, head spin, The Exorcist. How old are you? Twelve. Is there someone inside you? Sometimes. Few movies have inspired as much publicity about its audience's experiences as 1973's blockbuster horror classic, The Exorcist. Noted for its unrelenting scares and convincing special effects, the movie caused scores of audiences to become so scared and so sick they had to leave the theater, and the ones who stayed were stunned by what they saw. Keep away! The sour is mine! One of the movie's most terrifying and nausea-inducing moments is when the possessed girl's head spins around, marking a point of no return for the demonic possession at the center of the story. It's a moment of obscenity, sacrilege, and body horror that movie audiences found impossible to shake. What is your daughter's middle name, Mrs. McNeil? Teresa. What a lovely name. What movie have you walked out on? Tell us in the comments. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.